Henry V was King of England from 1413 to 1422. He's the tenth Plantagenet king to sit on England's throne. He's famous for winning stunning victories against the French, defeating them at the Battle of Agincourt, and almost having himself declared King of France. But Henry V is perhaps most significant because his early death would lead directly to a crisis in England, which would culminate in two branches of the royal family, the Lancastrians and the Yorkists, going head-to-head in the bloody Wars of the Roses. Had he lived, the Wars of the Roses most likely would have never happened. And just think, without that, one of the world's most famous kings, Henry VIII, would have probably never even existed. Let's have a look at where he sits in our timeline of kings and queens. He's here, crowned just over 600 years ago. When Henry V was born in 1386, his father's cousin Richard II sat on the throne. And at the time of his birth in Wales, his father was simply Henry Bolingbroke, the 19-year-old son of the Duke of Lancaster, John of Gaunt. At that point, Bolingbroke most likely had no designs on the crown, and he couldn't have known that his newborn son would one day become one of the mightiest kings of England, who would conquer almost all of France. In 1399, though, all that changed. Having opposed King Richard II years previously, Henry Bolingbroke had been banished from the kingdom. In a fit of spite, King Richard also stripped him of his inheritance, the Duchy of Lancaster. Bolingbroke's patience snapped, and he sailed to England from exile, raised an army, overthrew and imprisoned Richard II, and had himself declared king. He was now Henry IV. His 13-year-old son Henry, the subject of this video, was suddenly in line to the throne of England. Though his father's reign was beset by problems, namely uprisings against his rule, this would give the young Henry V an invaluable early introduction to military matters. In 1403, for instance, whilst helping to put down an uprising by a rival noble at the Battle of Shrewsbury, the 16-year-old prince was struck in the face with an arrow and scarred for life. As the decade wore on, Henry IV was plagued by an ongoing illness, and so the young prince, the king-in-waiting, took more of a role in running the country. Finally, in 1413, Henry IV, aged just 45, died, and his 27-year-old son was proclaimed Henry V. One of the king's first acts was to forgive all those nobles who had opposed his father. The result was that, for the first time in many decades, there was a period of domestic peace. This enabled the new king to focus his attentions on foreign affairs, namely conquering France and having himself declared king there, a plan that was first formulated 70-odd years ago previously by his great-grandfather, Edward III. Edward's claim to the throne was through his mother, the daughter of the King of France, Philip IV, though many French nobles rejected his claim because they didn't recognise any inheritance that was passed through the female line. Edward III had come very close to achieving his ambition, thrashing the French at the battles of Cressy and Poitiers. But in 1415, Henry V pulled off a victory which outshone all that had come before it, the Battle of Agincourt, where an English invasion force came face to face with the French king's army. The English army of 6,000 men were massively outnumbered by the French, whose army was possibly up to five times larger. The English archers, or long bowmen, dug in, surrounded by spiked posts driven into the ground to protect them from charging horses, and opened fire. The French were slaughtered. Among the estimated 6,000 dead Frenchmen were a virtual who's who of high-ranking military commanders, including the leader of the French army himself, Charles de Albret. The latter had commanded the French army in the main because the King of France, Charles VI, was, at the time, very seriously mentally ill. He'd had several breakdowns at that point, forgetting he was king, forgetting who his wife was, falling into catatonic comas, and for some time, believing that he was made entirely out of glass. Between Henry V's victory, which he compounded by conquering most of northwest France, and laying siege to Paris, and Charles VI's mental state, it seems the French were done for. The Treaty of Troy was signed in 1420, naming Henry V as the heir to the French throne. A month later, he tied England and France together in an even tighter embrace, marrying the French king's daughter, Catherine of Valois, who in 1421 bore him a son, the future King Henry VI of England. In a few short years, the mighty Henry V had accomplished everything his great-grandfather had sought. Not only was he King of England, he would soon be King of France. Henry spent the next two years mopping up resistance to his planned rule, but suddenly, unexpectedly, disaster struck. The king, busy laying siege to a town in northern France, contracted dysentery and died in August 1422, aged just 35. The French king Charles VI died in the October. Had he lived another eight weeks, Henry V would have been crowned king of France. But fortune intervened and it didn't happen. Henry V's body was shipped home and buried at Westminster Abbey. He was succeeded by his nine-month-old son, who was crowned the king of England before he could even walk. We'll cover the life of this baby king, Henry VI, in our next video.